and you know the order in which you did these, so yours is the last one coming off the printer. You know, it would be good if each of us had a new Sherry, would you get those since you're out of Um yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk just a little bit about that here coming up. Okay, so how do, how do we get out of this? Oh, just close this up. Okay. okay. So, um, the four cornerstones <laughs> to effective communication are honesty, authenticity, integrity, and love, or in terms of love, wishing somebody well. Okay? Um, if we can have those four things, those four cornerstones, when we come into a, a conversation to communicate with someone, we have a better a better chance of making that communication work out, okay? Um, so be honest, be authentic, be yourself, okay? Have integrity, you know, do talk and be who you are, even when no one else is looking, be that same person and love or wish somebody well. I like wishing, wishing them well, but I think L, you know, fit with their... Thing. So, um, but wishing someone well is it, it doesn't mean, oh man, I love you so much. It just means I wish you well enough that I want you to go on and, and, and have a good day to be in, to be happy with yourself. I mean, you wish somebody well, um, so you're not angry or wishing them harm or wanting them to fall over dead. You know, you you wish them well. So, okay, that is the end of the PowerPoint, um, and now I want to direct your attention to the, oh, I want to direct your attention to the papers that I gave you. Turn the light on. Yes, we can turn the light on. All right. Um, I did not write this up. I graciously and thankfully took it off of uh, the internet. In this oh, I left my other one on the printer. Okay, well, whatever. We'll keep going. Um, Do you need something? No, there? it's okay. I'll just I'll just look at a different one. Okay, so um, on here, some of it is kind of highlighted. Um, so I highlighted some important parts I wanted to go over with you guys as a group. Um, but then you have this in front of you if you want to read it closely for yourself. Okay. <clears throat> The first point that I have highlighted, it says, if you can control communication style, you can control your communication style, you can control the outcome of most interactions. But remember that each person expects the other to communicate, communicate exactly as he does. So when these expectations are not met, then conflict exists. And that's what you guys all spoke about, about how those feelings come up, okay? Um, so then it also goes on, and so the noble um, says what other people only think, and he believes that each person should say exactly what he feels, and that to do anything less is just dishonorable. Okay? <coughs> um, they talk to produce a result, but they often forget about building that relationship. Um, and so when they forget that, they forget that that conversation is going to have an impact on the outcome. Okay, we are much more willing to do something we might not want to do if we have a relationship with that person and if we think that that person is wishing us well. Okay, I mean, I'd much rather do something um, for someone even if I don't like to do it if I have a relationship with that person. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so um, in dealing with nobles is easy because they're predictable, they're uncomplicated communications, um, and they don't get hurt easily in their feelings. So the reflective person is going to take something that a noble would just be like, oh, well, that's what they feel, and the reflective person is going to be like, crushed, oh my gosh, why would this person say stuff like that to me? Um, so, and when you're talking with a noble, you want to talk with them, be direct, start your conversation by stating your purpose or your conclusion first, because that's how that person 
communicate. So if you can talk with them and state your purpose and what you're hoping to get out of that conversation, you're going to be able to communicate with them more effectively. For the Socratic, um, a series of questions leads the answer to a logical conclusion. They're persuasive communicators who enjoy discussion and debate, and they have a tendency to be <coughs> directive. Okay? Um, these, the Socratic, they go from one thing, <coughs> and then they'll drop down and kind of tell you some background about that, and then they'll go back up to the other, and so if you're not with them, you can get lost in their conversation. Um, so if you're going to talk with a Socratic person, plan some time because not <laughs> your interaction is not going to be brief with them. Okay. Um, Nothing is ever complete enough for the Socratic person. It doesn't matter how prepared you come to that conversation. It doesn't matter how much you have lined out. They're always going to find something. Or they're like, I can't do anymore. <laughs> so, um, they're going to ask you and they're going to be, the Socratic person is going to come at you with things that you can improve. Well, if you did this, maybe it would be this. Or, have you thought about this? They're never going to be satisfied with what you bring because they're always going to have something else to add. Okay, the reflective type um, is concerned with the interpersonal aspects of the interaction. Okay, um, maintaining the personal re relationship assumes precedent. <clears throat> they will tell you what you want to hear rather than what they feel. Okay. Um, if they don't tell you what you want to hear, they may not say anything at all, just like Liz said. Uh, I, I, too, am a reflective. Cammie's a reflective. Um, in order just to avoid something we're not comfortable with, it's easier to just be like, okay, sure, we'll, we'll do it. But know that if we do that, then we have that resentment that builds inside of us that we say, I didn't really want to do that, I didn't agree with that. <clears throat> but we do it anyway. Um, okay, credibility is a problem for reflectives because of their reluctance to be directive or assertive. Okay? Um, and strong-willed individuals are likely to take advantage of reflective people because we're very courteous <coughs> and we almost allow it to happen because we don't want to stand up and, and be that bold person and be the noble and be like, okay, hey, I, I don't agree. Okay, so the magistrate believes in honest exchange of opinions, um, information, and analysis of detail. <clears throat> they are intense and they can often be overbearing, and they are concerned with the bottom line and the details. Self-contained abilities lead people to think of him as a know-it-all. Okay, so if you're kind of in that um, that area there, um, <clears throat> people may think that about you. That doesn't mean that you are a know-it-all. It just means that they may think that because of the way you come off. Um, they tend to have difficulty dealing with people at work. They're often argumentative and get into trouble because they talk, but they don't listen very well. Okay, and then the candidate... To the back page. Oh, yeah. One of them. Sorry, I left it on the printer. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> the candidate is pleasant and patient and believes that problems can be solved by talking. Um, they're warm, supportive, analytical, and verbose. So they have lots of words in their vocabulary. Um, they're patient and willing to listen. They're reflective, but they speak as a noble. So None of these are good or bad. It's not like if you're one, you're good. If you're the other, you're bad. It's just that they have their positive sides and their negative sides. Um, so we just want to be aware. I think that's the main thing today is that I want to make you aware that we all have different communication styles. And when we use them, if we're not speaking the same way, communicating the same way as the other person, then it can resolve in a conflict. But 
if we're more attuned to what that person speaks like or how they communicate, we can try to work with that within ourselves and hopefully the other person will work on their end too. So, yes. Do you think that that quiz would have more validity if it were completed by others? That's what I was thinking. thinking that too. You know, my opinion of myself with me answering that, somebody else answering that might be two different things. I mean, yeah, I think you, you can do it like that, but I think it's important to, to reflect on yourself too, you know, yeah. Well, don't you think that it's also, it's just like that comment came up, what do you like at home, what do you like here? Mm -hmm. There's there's really more than one side of you. I know I have a daughter that, you know, you get her in a work environment, she's absolutely the most pleasant thing in the world and just gets along with everybody. You get her at home, and I mean, we all hear it, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, it's it's like she's been nice all day, I can't take it anymore. I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. So there's some, there's some variables there on how they can... It, it can be controlled, <laughs> right? I, yeah. You know. So I don't know. for me, I tend to be the same whether I'm here at home, out in public. I mean, that's me though. Mm -hmm. So I think you know, if you, we did it here for the work setting, but different. I mean, if.